Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, welcome to the National Academy of Sciences and the ceremonial presentation of the Nobel Prize medals and diplomas to the 2021 laureates from the Eastern United States. Please stand as we recognize the outstanding achievements of Sukuro Manabe, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physics. David W.C. McMillan, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. and Joshua Angrist, recipient of the Sverius Riksbank Prize in Economic Sciences, awarded in memory of Alfred Nobel. You may now be seated. The National Academy of Sciences is honored to host this very special event. Please welcome to the stage, President of the National Academy of Sciences, Dr. Marsha McNutt. Hello, everyone. What a great day for science in the entire world and a great day for science in America. On behalf of the National Academy of Sciences, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today, and it's great to see such a fabulous turnout of science lovers. Uh, today we are honoring the new laureates who reside on the East Coast of the United States. Sukuro Manabe is a recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physics. David McMillan, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, and Joshua Angrist, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences. The day after tomorrow, on Wednesday, we'll be organizing and uh, participating in a parallel session at the Irvine Center, the Beckman Center in Irvine of the National Academy to honor the West Coast recipients of Nobel Prizes. Now, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, these laureates were not able to travel to Sweden for the normal Nobel Prize ceremony in Stockholm, which is truly an amazing event. So I got a call one day from the head of the Nobel Foundation asking whether the National Academy of Sciences would be willing to host the presentation of the medals and the certificates to the American laureates. And of course, I was delighted to say yes, because this is quite an honor for us here at the Academy. And after all, more than 200 Nobel laureates are members of the National Academy of Sciences. That's about 10% of our membership have Nobel Prizes. I'm thrilled that we can all be together today to honor our laureates. I know that Victor Zhao, president of the National Academy of Medicine, sitting here in the second row, joins me in thanking some of the special guests who are here in the audience. They include Eric Lander, Eric sitting next to Victor, uh, who's President Biden's science advisor and director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy. Also joining us today are Rick Spinrad, sitting next to Eric. Uh, he is the uh, Undersecretary of Commerce for Oceans and Atmospheres and Administrator of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. I think you'll all agree with me that as we approach the two-year mark in this pandemic, that science has made a difference. COVID has been a top priority 
for just about everyone during this time, but especially for the researchers. Scientists across many disciplines have risen to the challenge. They've uh, helped us understand the origins and the uh, evolution of this novel virus. They've identified and communicated about effective interventions and, of course, developed the vaccines which allow us all to be here today. And science has repeatedly risen to the challenge in times of crisis. But it's important to recognize that none of these scientific accomplishments would have been available without a solid foundation of decades of investment in fundamental research. Indeed, the fruits of basic research have long contributed to our prosperity, our security, and have fueled the most important advances in our modern world. Everything from mapping the human genome to developing life-saving medicines and vaccines. And from exploring our universe to improving the understanding of this fragile planet, the only one we call home. Following in the tradition of past laureates, the scientists we are honoring today had to take risks. And they had the conviction to follow their research to new and unexpected discoveries that few others could have imagined. I was also going to say they had many setbacks, but David McMillan disavowed me of the fact that they all had setbacks. <laughs> now all of science, and indeed all of humanity, is benefiting from their achievements. We owe them our thanks and gratitude and they are an inspiration for all of us and all those who come after us in the years ahead. And now please welcome Dr. Maria Rogren. She is uh, both the Innovation and Science Counselor from the Embassy of Sweden, and she is also moderator extraordinaire. Maria, podium's yours. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Dear Nobel Prize laureates, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today we honor three great scientists for their discoveries that have made us better understand the world around us. Dr. Shukure Manabe, Professor David Macmillan, and Professor Joshua Angrist. You have all contributed immensely to advancing the scientific knowledge in your respective fields. And that is why you soon will be awarded with the world's most prestigious prize for scientific achievements, the Nobel Prize, the Grammy of Science. <laughs> During these challenging times, scientists and the research community are more important than ever. The world needs you. We need scientists that are willing to spend years in the lab or at the desk doing hard work to find answers to important research questions. This hard work, and sometimes more failed experiments than successful ones, not always, uh, is necessary to make breakthrough discoveries. You are awarded for your scientific contributions and not for being role models. But as Nobel Prize laureates, you are important role models for future generations of scientists. Just like Marie Curie was a role model for me when I decided to enter the field of physics. You are the rock stars of academia. And you will help make future generations becoming excited about science. This is important and it should not be underestimated. Having said that, just like most uh, rock stars need a band, you also need a group of people uh, to jam with. Scientists need this collegial environment where you can discuss your problems and challenge each other's ideas. And even though you sometimes need to stay in the studio to work on that next billboard hit, like you're writing on a scientific paper, uh, more often than not, you probably also want to go on tour with your band, to go to a scientific conference and visit colleagues at another university or on another continent. It is a fact that many of the Nobel Prizes are shared. This uh, shows that breakthrough discoveries often are collaborative efforts. 
where one achievement builds on another, like in a relay race, or is a great teamwork, like a soccer game. Many of today's complex global problems call for cooperation and for re-evaluation of methods. And it's often not sufficient to look for answers within your own discipline, our own university, or even on, uh, in our own country. The US has a strong track record uh, and a strong uh, Nobel prizes and a strong research community with excellent scientists. This is evident uh, from the large number of Nobel prizes that have been awarded to scientists that are uh, at US universities. However, many of the US based laureates, including this year's, were born outside of the US. This openness and this ability to incorporate competence and ideas from the outside, to find new combinations of disciplines and methods, probably uh, contributes to the strong track record that the US has when it comes to Nobel Prizes. Alfred Nobel himself felt strongly for cooperation between nations. For Sweden, being a small country, openness and international cooperation is crucial. We value research cooperation with other countries, and there are many, many strong bonds uh, between Swedish universities and American ones. So let us continue to strengthen these links. Once again, congratulations to the laureates, uh, and thank you for your remarkable contributions to mankind. And now I leave the floor to uh, Dr. Anna Sjöström Duaji of the Nobel Foundation and also a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Dear laureates, dear excellencies, dear ladies and gentlemen, the Nobel Prize shows humanities ability to constantly find solutions to the difficult challenges we face. The awarded achievements high, highlight scientific, literary and humanitarian efforts that inspires us and gives us hope. The values of Alfred Nobel goes back to his ideas that were expressed already in his will. This short document captures an idea of human development a trust in international community, respect for knowledge, and in the faith of the potential for change. Alfred Nobel wanted his prize to inspire and to motivate people to work to, for, to accomplish a better world. The world has indeed become a better place based on science, literature, and peace work, and will continue doing so. The prizes this year covers areas from the discovery of new ion channels that, uh, for touch and heat sensations, the science behind climate change predictions, new ways to construct molecules, ways to understand causal relationships in society, to literature describing cultural challenges and the freedom of speech. This reflects the unique portfolio of the Nobel Prize and the legacy of Alfred Nobel is kept alive for the benefit of humankind. And the prize is awarded to laureates that have made a great contribution to humanity through their hard work, through your hard work, and the discoveries together that you have made with your co-workers and colleagues. Indeed, network and collaborations are important for great breakthroughs. And the legacy of Alfred Nobel is something we emphasize every day in our outreach activities of the Nobel Prize, where we meet students, teachers, researchers, and citizens. As you now become a part of the Nobel Prize community, we hope that you and your fellow Nobel Prize laureates of 2021 will want to be a part of these efforts in the future and for the future. You will continue making the world a better place. The fact that you will receive the medals and the diplomas today here in Washington that rem reminds us about the ongoing pandemic and how it has changed our condition of lives and how we do things. 
It also reminds us about the importance of science and coll collaborations across borders and how that we use that to solve severe problems. The Nobel Foundation, the prize awarding institutions, and everyone working with the Nobel Prize in Stockholm are very much looking forward to be able to welcome you when it is possible to carry out events and festive events in Stockholm. And everyone is sending their warmest congratulations and regards. On behalf of the Nobel Foundation, I would like to thank the National Academy of Sciences and the Embassy of Sweden for hosting this ceremony today and for fruitful and very valuable collaboration. Thank you so much. I now leave the floor to the Ambassador of Sweden to the United States of America, Karin Olofsdotter, who today has the very unique task of representing both the Nobel organizations and His Majesty the King of Sweden. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Karin Olofsdotter and I am the Swedish Ambassador to the United States. I would like to welcome you very warmly uh, to this very special occasion uh, at the National Academy of Science. Since 1901, the Nobel Prize has been presented to Nobel Prize laureates at ceremonies in Stockholm, and Oslo for that matter, on December 10th, the anniversary of Alfred Nobel's death. In his last will, Alfred Nobel expressed that he wanted to establish a prize and award those who had conferred the greatest benefit to humankind within the fields of science, literature, and peace. Dr. Sukuru Manabe, as announced in October, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award you the 2021 Nobel Prize in Physics for the physical modeling of Earth's climate, quantifying variability, and reliably predicting global warming. Professor David M. C. Macmillan, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2021 Nobel Prize in Chemistry to you for the development of asymmetric organocatalysis. Professor Joshua D. Angrist, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2021 Sveriges Riksbank Prize in Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel to you for the methodological contributions to analysis of causal relationships. In a few days, on December 10, uh, you and your fellow laureates uh, will be celebrated at a prize ceremony in the City Hall of Stockholm. And this will be attended by the members of the Royal Family, the Nobel Foundation, and the Nobel Prize Awarding Institutions. On this occasion, uh, the work you have been awarded for will be presented in more detail than today. And as customarily, uh, you would have received the prize uh, from the hands of His Majesty the King of Sweden. However, uh, as we are all aware, um, this year you will be celebrated with a distance enforced upon us by this pandemic. And since you cannot go to Stockholm, your medals and your diplomas have come to you. So, with regards from the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences uh, and the Nobel Foundation, it's a great honor to convey to you my warmest congratulations on receiving the Nobel Prize. Dr. Sukuru Manabe, please.
Professor David W. C. Macmillan, please. And Professor Joshua D. Angrist, please. So congratulations, laureates, you're now official. This is fabulous, what a great event. <laughs> it's fun to be part of it. And now, if you'll all join me out in the Great Hall, we'll get the party started. <laughs> 